Hi, this is Jason Luna, and today I'm going to be talking about Damien Chazelle's La La Land, or as they should call it, LA LA Land, what with all the L Los Angeles cliches we're subjected to. I mean, the opening number is set during rush hour traffic, we're crying out loud. And get this, actresses go on auditions. People talk about their acting and musical careers and nothing else. And year-round pool parties because, hey, no matter what time of year it is, it's always mild and sunny. But these things wouldn't really bother me if the only thing offsetting prolonged conversations about Mia, the actress played by Emma Stone, were only offset by prolonged musical numbers involving jazz. I know jazz is known for its long improvised solos, but two hours of movie time seems like a stretch, even for Count Basie. And it's not like we're talking about momentous songs here. You know, Mia's gotta go to a party, so we get a song about finding a parking spot in Griffith Park. It's artistic and stuff, so I guess you just have to tell your friends it's gonna win Best Picture. Although I feel bad for people counting on Mia and Sebastian, the piano player played by Ryan Gosling, to be anywhere on time. The minute they start walking, they just start tap dancing for no reason. The real question in this movie isn't whether Mia and Sebastian will get together, or whether she'll become a great actress or he'll become a great piano player. No, the question is, can you tolerate all the nostalgia? It's like a PSA for old-timey jazz. The entire courtship between Sebastian and Mia is based on factoids about Charlie Parker. And, I mean, most of the movie seems to be about them watching Rebel Without a Cause. I don't know if we're watching a romance or a 1950s uh, nostalgia trip of how cool the 50s were. And Chazelle's direction does not help things. I know that CinemaScope and nostalgic map paintings are cool, but they were cool when the directors who were using them in the first place, and he's copying them, did it in the first place. No one's going to suggest, you know, that that's actually pl plagiarism. I mean, those, those directors are dead anyway, so he, no one's going to sue. But it feels like we're caught in a memory of other movies, other musicals, to be specific. And that's the real point. I mean, most people love nostalgia, so most people are going to love this movie anyway. I mean, look at the popularity of the 1990s that's going on now. And musicals are the same way. If you like musicals, you're going to like this movie. You got, the, you got, the, you got the, the musical tunes that are catchy. You got the romance that's easy to understand, but with just enough wrinkles to be technically different, like dream sequences and tracking shots. So, to summarize, based on the whimsical allowances that musicals are made, I'm going to have to... Eh, and some technical achievements by the director, not to mention some enthusiastic and likable performances by Gosling and Stone, if nothing else. I'm going to have to plug my ears to the people who say this is the best movie ever, and go, la 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 la, and give this three out of five stars. This is Jason Luna. Thanks for listening.